Well, I'm anxious to see. I mean, I've seen the seen the teasers. I'm anxious to see the whole thing. How long did it take to put this thing together? Um, so we probably started it. It's probably been a two-year process. So we'll have started it off um, coming up with the draft treatment, running it by Lego, and talking to DC about getting them comfortable really with what is a more parody take. You know, we'd obviously done video games because I, I design all the video games as well. So we sort of got got familiar with Lucas and, and you know, all those different licenses. So part of the process was talking through with Lego and DC and getting them comfortable. We're going to take these characters and make them larger than life. Um, so that was great fun. You know, they had lots of great feedback and, and um, allowed us to do some great stuff, which, uh, which you'll see. Um, but I guess it's so it was a good long time with that. We then got the script written um, and approved by David Goodman, who's a great, great scriptwriter. Um, so I did a treatment, and he wrote that up into a script. And then from that being approved to us finishing was around about 12 months um, for us to produce the movie. And we made the video game at the same time. So the plan was always to write a story uh, for a movie. We wanted to make a movie, because the video games are always based on, on movies, generally. And we'd struggled with the first Batman video game, because we couldn't really use the movies, because they just got too dark. So for the second one, we always planned, well, let's make a movie, a Lego Batman movie, and then we can base our video game on that. Um, and then how it happened is making a movie uh, to the quality you want to make it takes longer than we we realised with the video games. So the video game came out first, and then the movie's coming out now. Um, so so that's the sort of process. So it was about a year from start to finish on the movie um, after the script was written. It was about three months for the script. How did you sell the studio on? All right, we've had a successful franchise with the video games one and two. The games are fun to play. You know, we like when they when they die, they actually break apart. And how do you sit there and go, all right, now we want to make a full-length feature, 88 minutes of this? Well, yeah. part of it, I, I, I kind of answered there, is, is that, you know, we said, look, our characters have voices now. For, for um, uh, you know, we knew we were going to have to take another step with telling the, the, the stories in the video games. There's only so far you can go on miming, and especially with Batman, where we weren't parodying any material. So we, we, we knew we'd have to add voices to the characters. We we're going to have to have performances. That's so we wanted to get great characters and great performances. So our, our whole cell was, look, let's make a, a movie a Lego Batman movie because then that will allow us to make the video game uh, and to tell just a cool Batman story uh, with voices and everything else so it's, it, it's all it's a very synergistic process the whole thing was tied up in there and so I think they thought well we want the game because one of the sort of you know, within home entertainment which is where, where we as a video game company sit um, you know, they, they, they want the video games. They understand that they're very, really, very, very popular. Um, and they obviously had a capacity for, for making directed to video. So it was kind of a trade. I wanted to make the movie. They wanted the video game. And we said, look, we can do, we can do, we can do some smart stuff with this. And make, you know, hopefully when you see it, you'll, you know, the production values, the amount we could put into the movie, because we were making a lot of stuff that was used on the video game as, as well, just, just leaves you with a really high-end, high-quality movie. I think it's a lot further beyond what you typically get with a with a, a, an animated, a, you know, CG movie. Um, At the time, that was the, uh, the first voice work on on a Lego video game. Yeah, okay. yeah, but we knew we were going to have to go that way. We had a lot of <coughs> people saying, "Yeah, the miming." You know, we, with the, with the Lego as a franchise, we think of it as a franchise because the company, you know, I, I run. TT Games, I run TT Animation, and we have the, the Lego video game rights uh, exclusively. So, and rather than just sit there and um, sit on our laurels, just make the same thing over and over, we constantly with each, each step, we try and push it forward. And there's a risk there that you change too much and people would, would stop playing the game, so we have to be really careful. So adding a voice, we knew we needed that to move forward. We wanted to tell original stories, we wanted to give Lego characters a voice, um, and had some really definite ideas of how Batman and Robin and Superman's relationship should go. And so um, we knew we had to do that kind of stuff. Um, so how that does that, I mean your original question was what exactly <laughs> oh no I was, I was just curious um, uh, on, the, on the voice why I was we, trying to remember if that was the first uh, yeah so, so that was the, the first game of the voice so we knew we had to do that um, so that really drove that mm -hmm. and that, it, it opened up like this great opportunity you know, like I said uh, you know, I sold my company TT Games to Warner Brothers about five years ago mm -hmm. and part of that was because I was really interested in can we, can we make movies soon? Right. so really the Lego Batman movie was what our first go at let's make a film and um, you know, a happy side effect is we got to make a video game um, with it too. Yeah. But the story, the story of the movie has so much more to it than the video game, which we're really excited about. So. What, if, what, if, what if fans of the video game get out of the movie and vice versa? That they don't get any other... There's a lot more story. I mean, you know, it's twice as much... Oh, you know, 
pretty much half the movie is, is not seen in the video game at all. Um, so there's a lot, it's, it's a lot more complete telling. Another thing with the video game is the way you animate. The whole thing's been completely reanimated. Anything that we would have shown in the video game has been completely reanimated. We've gone over it. It's all been relit, re you know, just, just started from scratch again. Um, now that was all going on in parallel with the game. So the way a story is in a game is driven forward is, is much quicker cuts. Uh, we want to just get into the gameplay. Uh, we're giving you critical bits of information. And then you're going to have 45 minutes, an hour, before you see another piece of the story. So it's a much more disconnected, disconnected experience. So all the, there's lots of clever twists and fun gags and lots of running jokes throughout the movie that when a scene broken into these little bits in the video game, they just, you, don't, you don't get to see it correctly. I know some people have tried to put bits together on the internet and sort of stitch it all together. It doesn't work. It's a different experience, and I hope when you see it today, you'll say, ah, okay, this all makes right. sense now. It's just like trying to watch one of your favorite movies, cutting out loads of essential bits, stitching it all together, and then playing it slightly quicker than it should be. It's, it's not how it was ever intended to be. Um, so we're really excited but does it about follow uh, some of the levels, like the, the, yeah. the car chase? Um, yeah, this, yeah. yeah. Because we made the movie story, you know, story about your dinner mm. animatic and then based the game on that, then the beat points are, are, are broadly similar, for sure. Well, there's an awful lot of content that, that wasn't in the video yet. So how do you avoid uh, repeating some of the parody stuff that's already out there from other sources? Uh, in terms of parodying... Like Batman, I can see. Or just generally uh, the parodies of other, other people who've had a go at Batman and Superman. Yeah, like Robot Chicken, do something. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think... I think we have very distinct characters that I think work really well for us. And again, have you, I mean, if, you, if you've played the game, you'll have seen you know, how, how Robin acts like a little kid who's always trying to impress his dad, who's Batman. And Superman is just absolute loner, just wants to do it himself. He, he has no time for Robin messing up because he thinks everyone should be as efficient as him. And he hates the fact Superman can fix everything all the time. <laughs> so we went into these really um, specific character types. And I know other people have had some fun and done various bits and pieces. But I think our key, our key thing, everything we've done is Lego, in terms of parody, is that the characters themselves believe, you know, Lego Batman believes he is Batman. You know, there's no argument, he is Batman. But, you know, he's, not, he's not mugging to the camera and winking and doing that kind of stuff. And a lot of the, ta a lot of the parodies that are out there are very much sort of knowing. These, this, what's funny is these characters think they are the characters. They never play up to the camera and the, there aren't cheap gags as such in that way. But I think what's funny about it is watching them earnestly trying to do what they do. It's just funny seeing Lego characters doing that. And that's what we found with all the other franchises we've done, with, uh, all, you know, with Star Wars and everything else, with Lego in there. Is they're taking themselves dead seriously, but it's just so funny to see. They don't, think, they don't know they're in a comic. Yeah, no, it's true. Uh, I, I've got to give a slight nod to how it should have ended as well. Uh, if you've seen their stuff and the oh, Super yeah. Hero oh, yeah, Cafe. Yeah. And seeing the, the Batman and Super... Now, it's a different characters there, but just seeing them in that setting, just having an argument over coffee, it's, it's, it's great to see that. But yeah, that's, that's the kind of tone um, that, that we can go for, too. Was the transition from, you know, normally it's kind of more pantomime to actually getting the logistics of the, 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 the speech patterns and getting the voices in there, was that a smooth transition, or did you find it kind of was it difficult to figure out the pacing? It, certainly in terms of the pacing, because, I mean, we have a, a huge team of animators, so the, the video game team, you know, everyone we employ, employ there, all the technology we used to render the video games and everything else, we used all of that to make the movie. So we made the movie completely in-house. We didn't go out of house for anything. So we start to finish within the, within the studio, um, except for we went out for the writers and obviously the voice actors. Um, so that whole process. And yeah, that was some interesting learning curves. We do it differently now, having learned what we've learned. But a lot to do with the, the pantomime and the pacing especially. Leaving enough time holding on a gag, you know, and seeing reaction shots and everything else uh, with the dialogue, knowing how long to hold, that was all, yeah, we had to learn a lot. And that's why we ended up just reanimating. Just, just in the game, we just didn't leave the gags long enough. We, you know, we learned an awful lot by just seeing how it all cut together. And, and you know, it's a world of difference when you see the finished movie. It all just sort of flows, we think, all flows and makes sense. But we were lucky because we got to do it in the game and then observe the reactions and then tighten it up and change it. So I think as a standalone product looking at the movie, I think it works really well. We're really pleased. What next would you like to see LEGO do, or what other uh, project do you have that would be an ideal project that you haven't gotten the license to yet? There's, there's, there's tons of stuff I'd love to do that we wouldn't be allowed to do. I'd love to do LEGO Aliens. Mm -hmm. um, I think LEGO Matrix. There's some great, you know, hundreds of identical agents. With, you know, some really, really <laughs> cool stuff. What we And lots of people ask for this stuff. Why aren't you doing LEGO Game of Thrones? And we point out, LEGO makes toys for kids. <laughs> <laughs> you right. can probably figure that out. So there's stuff you'd love to do. But well, like LEGO Disney or any of that stuff? Well, I mean, Disney own Marvel and they own... 
you know, uh, Lucas. So there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. And we toyed with things. I think we, we, I think we turned down Lego Toy Story. We as a company made the Toy Story video games. And then Lego made the toys for the Toy Story movies. And we just thought, a video game, or a movie of a video game of a toy, of a toy in a movie. <laughs> I just didn't, you know, what we liked with, I mean, this is the other thing, is, is when we look at a property, you look at it and say, what does Lego add to this? What does it give you permission to do that you couldn't normally do? So you can get things like there's Lego uh, do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle sets. And you think, well, you can make a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle video game. I'm not saying we will or we won't. But if you look at it, well, what does, that, what does adding Lego in there do? And you think, well, it's already slapstick and, and, and fun and for kids. and everything. So adding Lego is just a confusing element. Well, you take something darker, you know, and add Lego. You know, you can start parody. And I think that's where things... I mean, I'm not saying Star Wars is dark, but it's, you know, it's got its own authority. You know, it's got this, this presence where there's a little bit of slapstick, which you're probably trying to ignore, like Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> but really, it takes itself seriously. It's got a serious story to tell. And, it, it, you know, there's high, high points and low points. And, you know, and it's when you get in there and start parodying that, that the, the magic... I mean, Lord of the Rings is a far better example. You know, when you've got Gandalf saying, you shall not pass, and it's a Lego figure. Right. You can say exactly the same line, it's just funny. It's a new Twilight Lego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next question. <laughs>